fall to welcome. In this recording, I'm going to have a look at one of the primary texts of the Morrigan, Morrigan. And we are going to look at the Tom Beauregarvna, and I will take you through some of the source material for that. And then we will do a reading based on a translation, which is my preferred translation by author Morgan Daimler. So I'm going to share the screen here and you can have a look at what's going on, hopefully. So just give me the mouse. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, this website, vanhamel.nl, and it's the codex, C O D E C S. And this is an online database and resource for Celtic studies generally, and it's absolutely fascinating because you can look up any text, any story, and see what manuscripts it appears in and you know what language it's in, primary forms, um, all that kind of stuff, and any textual re textual relationships. That sounded rude. It's not rude. Textual relationships that it might have. So here we see Tonbo Ragavna. Now again, I'm just going to note my pronunciation is modern Irish pronunciation. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong for Old Irish, which is an entirely different language, apologies for any purists out there. So any Irish language pronunciations are my approximation in modern Irish of what may be Old Irish terminology. So I would say Ton Bo Ragavna for that, because in my head there should be a little H in there, Ragavna. So I love this note that it's arguably one of the Rem Scala to the Ton. And the Ton that they refer to there is I was going to say obviously, but maybe not obviously, is the Tombo Coolnia, which is the cattle raid of Cooley. And a Remschkela is a, a pretail to the Tawn. So the Tawn is, Tombo Coolnia is this massive, epic, long story that we have, which is fantastic. And then, but to kind of explain all the happenings of that story, you have all these pretails that come in. So this is arguably one of the Remschkela, Remschkela to the Ton. And I'm not sure why it's arguable. Uh, I think because scholars argue over everything probably. But in my head, it is certainly uh, very much a precursor to the Ton, Bokulnia. And Ton, by the way, just means cattle raid, basically. So there are quite a few a uh, ton that would be referred to through the Irish lore and literature. So it can get a little bit confusing, so I'll try and be very clear. But um, generally, if you hear the ton referred to, it's being ref it's the, the cattle raid of Cooley, the ton bo Coolnia. Sometimes it's shortened to TBC, uh, just to make things really interesting. So we have the ton bo Regavna, and the manuscripts that it's from is the Egerton manuscript, and manuscript 1318, which are in the um, in Trinity College and in the British Libra Library in London, um, respectively. The language is early Irish. The form is primarily prose, and textual relationships that are noted are added loch episode of Tombo Coolnia, and it's referred to in Achtra Nera, which is the adventures of Nera in the other world. So there are primary sources listed here, secondary sources, uh, queried results, and various other bits and pieces. So it's definitely worth um, looking up. Uh, it is from the Ulster cycle in the classification. And the subject tags that go along with this would be Cúchollan and the Morrigan. So we can move from there to one of my favorite sources, which would be uh, maryjones.us and the Celtic, sorry, Celtic Literature Collective. And we see here the cattle raid of Regavna. Uh, and the source that is given here for that is the Yellow Book of Lecan. So just flipping back here to the codex, when we say that the manuscripts 
are here. Um, and if you see any of my other videos on YouTube or anything like that, you know that I've talked a little bit about this before and probably will do again. And in my classes and everything that I run, uh, this is a fairly common kind of sticking point for people who get involved in the lore where the manuscript that it comes from and the, the book that it comes from are often different and you know the cycles are different and there's there's all sorts of stuff so within these manuscripts um, you could have a copy of the yellow book of Lee Can or now I'm not sure actually um, in these particular manuscripts but just speaking generally um, the any of the kind of the lore source texts that are that are noted um, could be in manuscripts that are called different things so for example the yellow book of Lican or the book of Palimote or the uh, the book of the Dun Cow or the book of invasions or you know all these all these source texts that are noted could be called something else when you're looking at the actual manuscripts that they appear in confusing I know so just bear with us we're going to make it very very simple when we read the text so um, the source here is the heroic romances of Ireland volume 2 by A. H. Leahy which was published in London by David Nutt in 1906 um, we're not going to read out this one um, because as I said I would like to go to my favorite translation which is Morgan Daimler's so before we get there, we will look at the Celt site from ucc.ie. So this is celt.ucc.ie. This is the University College of Cork have a project called the Corpus of Electronic Texts. Uh, Celt for short, kind of. And um, they have been working on this for years and years and years, putting the manuscripts online digitally. So there's huge value and, um, to the collection that's there. And we see that there is a, um, you'll often see actually when you go to the Celt, you know, if you're, if you're Googling it or something and it comes up in one of the Celt sources, um, it will often throw up the Irish language versions either at the top with a translation underneath or sometimes just on their own. So it's worth kind of, if you're Googling for the Celt version specifically, then it's worth having a look um, for the translation. And we see here that this is from the Egerton manuscript as well. So they've actually uh, pulled out the Irish uh, from that manuscript, the old Irish, and this is from the Yellow Book of Lecan. That's the source there. And this translation then is the translation from the Yellow Book of Lecan. So let me just see who did the translation here. Um, da -da -da. I'm not seeing it easier there. So you've got the list of manuscript sources. Um, would it be Turnison? Turnison's translation. Daniel Malik. Apologies if I'm after getting that. Um, very grateful to Daniel Malik for donating this material to Celt. So I'm not sure if that's the translator. Um, or just the, the digitizer. So apologies if I've gotten that incorrect there. Okay, anyway, we are not using that translation. So um, I did just want to kind of show you uh, Mary Jones Celtic Literature Collective um, in its entirety as well, in entirety. So I do plan on doing some other videos that look at lore generally, but um, you'll see if you go to maryjones.us forward slash c texts forward slash index Irish or I think it's just CTEX will get you to the Celtic Literature Collective generally, and then you can go into the Irish literature. Um, you can see manuscripts, uh, the Book of Leinster, the Book of the Dun Cow, Book of Ballymote, etc., etc. And it's definitely worth a look if you're um, if you have a couple of days to have a look through. But as I said, we are going to go with Morgan Daimler's 
translation. So this translation was posted on their blog on the 31st of March 2015. So it's been up there for nearly three years and it's one that I have referred to regularly. So if you go to lairvan.blogspot.ie, I think that .ie changes uh, depending on what, um, what country you're in actually. Um, that's a blogspot thing rather than uh, something that Daimler has put on specifically themselves. So uh, it's, if you actually Google, you can Google living liminally, L-I-M-I-N-A-L-L-Y, living liminally, or you can Google L-A-I or B-H-A-N, Lervan um, on Blogspot. And if you do that in combination with the Tombow Regavna, you'll see that there, or just go to their site generally and search uh, for Tombow Regavna and you will definitely find it because it's there. So um, Daimler said, this is my first attempt at translating an entire story. I think they've done some fantastic translations since then as well. Um, and they've chosen the Tombow Regavna because it's one of the favorites and it's fairly short and it is very much one of my favorites as well. It's um, one of the reasons why I wanted to start with it. Um, just for the record, I kind of feel that it is where we see the Morrigan in her, or there, or yeah, her, let's, let's go with her. Um, the gods are not really gendered generally. So um, the Morrigan in particular is a shapeshifter, so is not always female, but in my experience. But, um, this is the Morrigan in her most natural state, in my opinion. And you will, you'll see why as we go through it. When Cúchulainn was in Dún Imri, he heard something. It was the roaring of cattle. So that he woke up and was thrown out of bed and reached the bench that was sitting on the floor. After that, he went outside into the yard and it was his wife following behind him who brought his clothing and his armour. And he saw something in front of him, leg in his chariot, harnessed at Ferta Leg in the north. What brings you, said Cúchulainn to Leg. The roaring of cattle that I heard in the field, said Leg. What direction, said Cúchulainn. In the northwest, thus, said Leg. Follow on then, said Cúchulainn. After this, they went out to Oth de Firtha. After, while they were there, they heard a noise of the chariot in the side of Grelach Kulgari. They went down and saw a chariot before them. One red horse with a single leg was pulling it, and the shaft of the chariot went through the horse to the front of its forehead. A red-haired woman with red eyebrows was in the chariot, with a red cloak around her shoulders. The cloak hung down at the back of the chariot and dragged on the ground behind her. There was a big man in front of the chariot wearing a tunic, carrying a forked white hazel stick that he used to drive the cow. The cow is not pleased with her driving, said Cúchulainn. Indeed, it is not necessary to you to judge this cow, said the woman. It is not a friend's nor a companion's cow to you. Indeed, the cows of all the Ulster men are necessary to me, said Cúchulainn. You decide much, O oh Cúchulainn, said the woman. Why is it that the woman speaks to me, said Cúchulainn? Why not him, the man who speaks to me? It's not the man that you shouted to, said the woman. Ha, said Cúchulainn. Speak, and you speak in his voice. Cold, wind, conflict, brightness, strife is his name, she said. Indeed, that name is wonderful throughout, said Cúchulainn. Then you are bound to speaking the course of this conversation for the man. What do you name yourself, said Cúchulainn. Not difficult. The woman who you are speaking to, said the man, is keen-edged, small-lipped, plain-cloaked, Hair sharp shouting, fierceness, a phantom. 
You give me an idiot's counsel, said Cucullan, based in this. Cucullan jumped beside her in the chariot and set his two feet on her knees and his dart against the crown of her head. Who puts this point indeed, said Cucullan. A small something then, said she. I am a woman satirist indeed, said she. And it is from Dara Macfiechny of Coolnia that I bring the cow. She is a poet's reward for a poem. I'll hear the poem then, said Cucullan. A small something only, said the woman. Not manly to you thus while brandishing over my head, said she. Then after that Cucullan went, so that he was between the two poles of the chariot. She gave this poem. Low-born foundation you grab. Take a herd driven. Eastward blown, Merhamna. Great misery, chief stone, hurrier. Raven fierce, but not bringing great floods. Peak of fame, unique death. Plain of son of heart, every head. World warring judgment. Half a glen severed, bright wild place. Your life, deceitful arrival runs. Over poets demands, over mounds messenger. Your direction, every burning. Coolnia, O Cuchulain. Cuchulain sprang into his own chariot after that. Then nothing was there of all of them. Not the woman, not the chariot, not the horse, not the man, not the cow. And he saw that she was a black bird on a branch near him. A hurtful woman you are, said Cuchulain. It is distress then that will be on this bog until doomsday, said the woman. Bog of distress was its name from that time afterwards. If only I had known it was you, said Cuchulain, not this way would we have separated. Whatever you would have done, said she, misfortune would result from it. You cannot bring misfortune to me, said Cuchulain. I am able indeed, said the woman. It is bring about your death I am and shall be, said she. I brought this cow then, she said, from the fairy mound of Crookan, so that she was mounted by the brown bull of Coolnia, by me. That is the bull of Dara Macfiechny. And it is that inf interval you be in life, until the calf in the womb of this cow is a young bull, and it is this that stirs up the cattle raid of Coolnia. I will be renowned through this aforementioned cattle raid, said Cuchulain. I will kill their champions, defeat their big battles. I will survive the cattle raid. How will you be this? Sorry. How will you do this aforementioned, said the woman. For at the time of your combat with a man of similar strength, similar form, Similar skill, similar quickness, similar alertness, similar tribe, similar weapons, similar greatness. Against you I will be an eel throwing twists about your feet in the ford, until it will be greatly unfair odds. I swear to the god Ulsterman swear to, said Cuchulain. I will kick you against blue-grey stones of the ford, and there will be no cure for you from me for it until doomsday if you don't ask my forgiveness. I will be a blue-grey wolf bitch then against you, she said, and I will take a strip from your wrist on the right up to your forearm on the left. I swear to a god Ulstermen swear to, said Cuchulain. I will wound you myself with my dart until your eye bursts in your head and there will be no cure for you for me for it until doomsday if you don't ask my forgiveness. I will be a red-eared white heifer then, said she, and I will come in the water in a place of the ford another time. You will be at combat with a man as skilled as you 
and a hundred red-eared white cows after me. All the cows behind me will burst into the ford and violate fair combat against you. And your head will be taken away off you in that very ford. I will swear by others. I will throw a cast out of my sling at you and with it break the lower part of your leg shortly. And by no means will there be a cure for you from me for it until doomsday if you don't ask my forgiveness. And that will not be done any day at all, said Cuchulain. They separated and Cuchulain went back along his course to Dun Imre. And the Morrigan went with the cow to the fairy hill of Cruachan in Connacht, into the Shee. So just a couple of points on that. Um, Morgan says, the majority of the Irish material here is from the Yellow Book of Lican version. However, the Morrigan satire poem is the Von Egerton version. Um, the first point of note was, the first star, You give me an idiot's counsel, said Cuchulain, based in this. And the note here is, this may be better relayed in English as, you must think I'm an idiot to tell me this, i.e. he thinks they are intentionally playing with him. And the next note actually is about the, putting the, the, the spear or the dart in to, to her head. So it's literally Klechina, which is a small dart or javelin, which was one of Cuchulain's particular weapons. And the note on the color, the blue-gray stones in the, um, in the stream and the blue-gray of the she-wolf. For those who are interested in the use of color in Irish material, it's given here as gloss or literally green, green in modern Irish certainly, but green which can be anything from a light green or blue to a blue-gray. And the last note was um, about violating fair combat against you. So in Old Irish, fair fair literally means men's truth. This concept is the basis of honourable con combat in Irish warfare and hinges on the idea of one-on-one -on -one fighting of equal opponents. It is fair fair that allows Cúchulainn to hold the ford and hold back Connacht's army during the Tawn Bo Cúnia. So this material is copyright Morgan Daimler and they are original translations that Morgan does. And I just wanted to kind of point that out in case I wasn't clear enough. And all can be accessed on Morgan's site. And I would just like to patreon.com forward slash Morgan Daimler. If you would like to support Morgan's amazing translation work, they have a Patreon, so which I support personally, by the way. And um, you can sign up to become a patron at whatever level you want. And very, very, very much recommend, uh, I very highly recommend supporting Morgan Daimler, who is creating Irish pagan themed articles and translations of old Irish myth. And while you're on Patreon, if you would like to support me, it's Misha, Laura O'Brien, and I'm creating authentic spiritual connection to Ireland. So you can have a look at my patreon.com forward slash Laura O'Brien there okay so thank you very much for listening or watching and i i would like to do more lore videos and look at some of the text so if it's something that you're interested in please comment on it and um, ask me join my groups on facebook and uh, get on my author page all the links will be down below and um, if you're watching this on youtube or uh, in the description if you're watching on Facebook. So um, yeah, let me know, uh, comment on this and let me know if you liked it, if you didn't like it, how I could approve it or 
anything that uh, that you would like to see and um, if there's a particular text that you would like me to go through in this kind of a way uh, please let me know what that is okay and don't forget to join my mailing list as well which you can find in the links in the description along with this video and you will get weekly Irish resources and connection and bits and pieces that are authentic and a good way to respectfully connect back to Ireland through a native creator. Okay, so, Sloan. <laughs>